Kati tukakola tutia. Jango ka fixing and I am who I am and why I became a strong fighter for gender equality and women's empowerment. My dream to fight for gender equality and women's empowerment is a childhood dream which was inspired by the environment in which I lived. Seeing how the girls and the women were treated and discriminated against. You know, as I lived in this discriminatory environment where we were unfairly treated as a young girl, you know, comparing to my brothers, I grew up to question why. Why are women treated like this? And this why led me into wanting to go and learn and see why women are treated like that. Because when I was saying in my young mind, saying why, 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 I came to learn that they said those are women. Women are treated like that. They are treated as actually not as full human beings in their own right. So I grew up to question that, and that's why you see who I am and what I do. What shaped my dream and life up to now is that kind of treating a woman not as a full human being in her own right. And so culture is the, is the major constraint hmm, to women's, to gender equality and women's empowerment. Because the rest of the others hinge around there. Ignorance, hmm, not going to school, because they prefer boys going to school. Because women, girls are going to marry and then leave. Hmm? To the extent that for me in my culture where I come from, a man would say that I, I, I didn't have children. I only had, I, I didn't have, I don't have children. I have just, the, I have five girls and one child. And, and they say it, and it is normal, and they don't say anything wrong. Go on, the other one, uh -uh. you got only one child and, and three girls. You know, and you see what that tells you. So you grow up knowing that a girl is not a full human being in her own right. And later on, a girl is treated as property, as chattel. You know, you are like a chattel. They, they sell you when it comes to marriage, the, the customs of that culture of bride price. They exchange you with what? With, with cows or goats. I tell you, many people choose us. They say these African women have left their culture. They are following the white women. I tell you, when I, I nurtured that dream to fight for gender equality and women's empowerment, hmm, I had never seen a white woman or any white person. So there are so many cultures, there are a number of cultures, but basically I want to say that customary and cultural practices are very big, big constraint and big hindrance to women's equality and empowerment. And of course, this denies the whole continent. One of the reasons why the continent of Africa is backward eh, is the inability of more than 50% of its population not to practice, to utilize their, their talents, to utilize their wisdom, to, to, to have their full potential realized for their own development, for the development of their family, and for the development of the nation. And yet, we are the very people who produce babies, who nurture them, who bring them up to where they should be. And do you know what? We are the people left ignorant. We are the people left without economic empowerment. We are the people thrown out of homes. And at times the men grab our children and take them away. When I see men saying, go and leave my children, I even laugh at them. Because women have the power to determine who is the father of these children. And I want to tell you as I talk to you, you are a son of your father because your mother said so. At least women, we have that power. It is a hopeless culture 
it is, I, why do I call it hopeless? Every country has got its own culture. For instance, every, every tribe, for instance, me and Ankore, we had a, a bad culture where your husband dies, you were supposed to be inherited by your, your brother. And much, much earlier, even before he dies, by the way, if you are in the house and, 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 and your, your husband is not there and the brother-in-law comes, he can put a spear at the entrance and goes in and you, you enjoy your sex. And when he, the husband comes, he's supposed to be to see the spear and say, oh, he would walk away. Eh? Those, that was the culture. And one of the culture was that if you go to marry the father-in-law, because he's the one who paid the cows, he, he, he had to sleep with you first to see whether the cows brought to the right kind of a person. Those were terrible cultures. They went. By the way, by the time AIDS came, they were still there, and I became a member of parliament. I remember I was threatening, I was threatening some of those people who were doing that culture. I said, I get to learn it tomorrow, I will go and publicize you everywhere. So those cultures went. Now the Baganda culture, the kneeling culture, they defend it. I don't want the Baganda to quarrel with me, let them go and kneel. But they defend it for nothing. Because for me, what it means, if, if the Muganda is kneeling, for the father-in-law and the mother-in-law, if I am a wife and I'm married in this home, and the, the culture is that I must respect the parents. Because when we are growing up, we also as young people, we respect, you don't come standing straight and greet parents. No, or mature people. You sort of bend, in Ankwere we bend a little to show that I respect you. In Uganda, they kneel, but do you know, in Uganda, why I say this culture is really wrong, it demeans women. The boy, the boy child, when she's young, does not kneel for any, any big people. They don't kneel for parents, they don't kneel for any big people. And yet the girl or child, when you see a boy, a brother and a sister come, the cowboy stands like this and greets me, and the girl immediately kneels down. Because they have embedded this culture into them. They have nurtured it into them. And therefore, when they grow, they are supposed also to kneel for their husbands. For me, that kneeling tells me that your place is down there. And that's where you stay. For me, I'm up here. For you, your place is down here. There is a need for what we call gender sensitization to conduct the sensitization about the importance of a woman. What society doesn't know, both men and women don't know, the importance and the need of a woman. God saw it. God saw that a man cannot remain alone. He has to lean on the woman and together they will make it. So how can we be disagree with God who saw his creation and knew it would flourish like that. So we need the, the, the what do they call it? the rewinding of the mind through gender sensitization and information. Turn around. Instead of, 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 of spreading the message of a woman not being full human being, instead of spreading a message, women are weak, women are useless, women are hopeless women. They used to say women can't study science, women can't study mathematics. I want to ask you, young man, is there any profession, is there any skill, is there anything now, even being president, even being anything, is there anything that women have not done? Is it there? If anything, we actually excel because God created us last as the perfecter of God's creation. After creating a man, there was still something missing. And God saw that there is still something missing. And that missing, which never came in a man, God put it in a woman. That's why two, two of us must be together. And that's why I get so surprised when I see society saying women cannot manage, women cannot be in government, women cannot, I want to ask you, these, you men here at home, when there is no woman, 
You can't manage even the home without a woman. It becomes meaningless. Children get lost. Nothing. The home without a woman is not a home, by the way, but according to culture. Before a man marries, he's living in a house. The moment a wife enters, it becomes a home. If you take me into those things, I hate them. You know why I hate them? A woman, all her life, is being nurtured, being trained, being to please a man sexually. The whole purpose, cultural purpose of upbringing a woman is to bring up her up as a wife. And a wife who is going to be like a servant of this man. And a wife who is supposed to please the man. Nobody, maybe our, our parents and the grandparents, I don't know. But even these days, eh? Women are being nurtured, even the Chiganda culture, the Chisakate. I don't blame, I don't condemn Chisakate. They are teaching many, many other things of good culture. But basic to it also is nurturing a, a girl to be a wife, and a wife who is going to please the man. Me, I ask, am I also not entitled to enjoy and be pleased in this sexual game? Do you know that many, many of the women, in fact, of our time, of even the past, never had anything to do with enjoying sex? Their responsibility is just there. The men dive, they climb, they do what they do, and they go. And for you, you are a factory to produce children, children, with nothing to enjoy in sex. And yet, sex between a husband and wife is supposed to be the highest communication of intimacy and the highest pleasure that they can express with one another. And it is a demonstration of the love. That sex thing is very important even to God. If you go and read the book of songs, eh? marriage is mentioned in the first book of Genesis and it is mentioned in the book of Revelation. God was expressing his love which he has for humankind through the love between a husband and wife, between a man and a, a woman. Who prepares men to please us? And that's why many men, except these ones now who go into, these days there is counseling. But for us who missed out on counseling, you, you, first of all, you are not supposed to have premarital sex, therefore you grow up not knowing anything to do with sex. And when you are getting married, the singers put you aside and they tell you what you are expecting and what you should do. And you reach there and find this useless man who doesn't know what to do. Oh, many of them, they can raise up an arms and attack me. But they know. I mean, we belong to Mother's Union, we belong to all these things, and we share experience. And they tell you, you my man comes, dives, not, does nothing. You don't see him. You don't see him. So men are supposed to be also nurtured and be trained towards that game. But this whole business of nurturing, rearing a woman, purpose and specifically for a role of being a wife, pleasing the husband, taking care of the children, and even the children in the home are more important and more superior than you as a wife. This must stop. Must stop.